Hi all, welcome to clickshare.com. In this video, let's understand more about concat function. As much as it is a string manipulation function, it also falls under aggregation function category. So let's get started and learn more about concat function. As you must be aware, concat function can be used in both script and user interface. When used in script, we need to use group by clause. I'll talk more about it with an example, but let's try and remember that whenever you're using in script, you need to use the group by clause. Especially if you're trying to fetch more than one field from the table, then you definitely need to use the group by clause. And there is one compulsory parameter and then three optional parameters. So you can get away just using one parameter, but there are three additional optional parameters. And this applies to both script and then also the user interface as well. So the first parameter which I'm going to talk about is the compulsory parameter or the parameter you need to specify is the field slash expression. So write the concat function and give a field name generally it would concatenate all the values or all the field values and then it'll give you one long concatenated string and this may not be just a field it can be a further nested expression the first optional parameter is the delimiter while the field values are concatenated together as a long string you can separate each of these field values using by using a delimiter and this delimiter can be a comma or a pipe or a special character or even for that matter some word if you wanted and then second optional parameter is the sort weight sort weight basically determines on how you wanted to sort the string or let's say that you have 10 distinct field values and if you wanted to sort them in a particular order, you can use the sort weight to get the concatenated string. To keep it simple, it's just sorting the string. And this can be either ascending order or descending order. We'll talk more about it. And the most important parameter is the distinct qualifier. So you have an option to specify whether you want the distinct list or you wanted the non-distinct list or no distinct list. Although concat function implicitly takes no distinct qualifier while evaluating. So when you don't specify anything within the concat function, it will automatically take no distinct. So it will give you all the duplicate values, which is not a bad thing. Sometimes you might wanted it. However, if you just wanted the distinct values, then you have to explicitly call the distinct qualifier as part of your as part of your syntax. Default sort weight is ascending, but you can also specify descending. What that means is the default sort weighting is always ascending. However, you can change that. I'll show you how to do that. So let's look at some examples on how to use the concat function in script and then also in UI and covering all of these things we have learned so far. So let me jump into click view. Go to script editor. So let's first try and use the concat function in script. So I have sample script. Let me close this pop-up window. I have the sample script and uh, I will go ahead and reload this and I have three fields so let me add them some simple values you have budget year and then the office number and the actual cost okay so now let's assume that you wanted to concatenate all the office numbers from one to five by using a pipe pipe delimiter. How do we do that? So let me go ahead and show you. So you can actually 
take this or probably to keep it simple I will do a rest and load so that you follow uh, the difference so I would say no concatenate here remember this concatenation is a table concatenation this works like as a union where what we are talking currently is the string function called string or the aggregation function called concat so please understand the difference between concatenate no concatenate and concat function I've made a separate video for concat and no concat just in case you might want to learn more about that as well so let's say no concatenate and then let's use call it concat underscore test just so that it's easy to follow and I would say load and here you can say office and I'll call this concat so you specify it if you see here the parameters we were talking about distinct string delimiter and sort weight right so let's go ahead and specify that and then let's give pipe delimiter and uh, I'll not sort it I'll leave it as it is and I would call it something else um, So let's call that and then resident load test. Right. Let's go ahead and save it. Remember, I said that we need to use the group by clause. I'll come to that in a minute. So let's go ahead and reload this. And we have a new field my office concat. And if you see here, you have the long concatenated list obviously this is a data island right now and it's not linked to the model that's what we wanted so it's not really linked to the model so let's not worry about that so let's say that now you wanted the distinct values you're not interested in having ones and twos repeated so many times you just want a distinct so all you need to do is add the distinct qualifier so this distinct qualifier applies within this function. So the container for the distinct qualifier is within this function. So let's save this and reload this. There we go. Now we have the concat function showing one, two, three, four, five instead of all the duplicate values. That makes sense, right? Okay. Now let's say that you're interested to also bring in the budget here within this table okay so now if I go ahead and say you can do one more field or you can add one more field and save this and this would give you an error but let me just show you that there we go invalid expression and then it's saying that it can't understand it basically because concat function here works as an aggregate function so within load script it works as an aggregate function so if you remember my first statement I said that concat function works although it's a string manipulation function it also falls under the aggregation function category this is what it means okay so let's go ahead and click on cancel and let's click on yes and let's go back to script so click view syntax or the load script syntax is actually expecting you to use the group by clause because you're calling this function you have to aggregate the concat function so let's group by and then take the budget here and save it and reload it now it works as expected if you see this now now the budget year is joining these two tables so it doesn't matter we are not interested in joining these two so we will leave it for now and then let me probably uh, just go ahead and rename it to something else so that you are clear my budget here save it and reload 
and add this list box and call my budget here. There we go. So now all these field values are linked by all the dates. That's all it's saying. So you can select anything and then you know that they're linked. And this but my budget year is separate from budget year as their data islands or two separate tables. So if you click on this, nothing happens on the other side. Right. So the whole purpose of showing you this these two fields is to make you understand on how you have to use the group by clause when you're calling more than one field while you're using the concat function right so if if there is only one field and you're using the concat function let me go back so if you're using only this particular field or if you're calling only this particular field by using the concat function it returns a scalar value scalar value means one value so, however, if you wanted to get a different field which will have list of values, in that case, you need to use the group by clause because concat function behaves as the aggregated function or the aggregation function. So now let's go back and see the PowerPoint and see what we've covered so far. So I'll, I'll go back to PowerPoint. And if you see, I've shown how to use it in script and when used in script, we've already covered the aggregation and the group by bit, and then the parameters are covered. So let's talk about the sort weight. We've not really covered sort weight here. So let's go back. So by default, if you don't specify the sort weight, the default sort weight is in ascending order, right? However, I said that you can change sort weight. Let's say that instead of values from one to five so let me go back if you see here you're getting values from one two three four five instead of that you wanted to get them in descending order right so let's go back and you can call the same field office however you can change this and then convert these values as negative values on the fly and then click few sorts them by descending order let me show you what I mean. So save it and reload it. There we go. So although there is no explicit parameter or no other parameter to call in descending and ascending order, but you can flip it and then change the ascending values into descending by giving a negative or making the values to negative numbers or make, adding the minus sign before the field name. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Uh, let's go back to PowerPoint. So I've also covered about sort weight and then the distinct qualifier, I've already shown it. And the default sorting is ascending, but you can do descending, which is, which is what I've shown you. And let's look at uh, the last one on how we can use it in UI and then also use it as set analysis syntax. So let's go back. So now that you have this, Let's say that if you have to use it in UI, right, as part of your expression language. So let me add the text object, right? And then I would say concat. And then if you see here, you have additional optional parameter, which is set expression. And then you have distinct qualifier and total everything remains as is, as what we have seen in the script, right? Now, let's go ahead and take office and do the same thing and my delimiter is pipe because i like pipe delimiters and leave it as is if you see this so now that we have done that and we are only interested in distinct values so i would call this distinct and hit ok so now you see one two three four five now if you wanted to sort them in descending order minus office and then this will become five four three two one right and let's go back and now let's see how we can use a set expression as i mentioned that concat function will also work as a set expression right so let's go back and then let's select the values actual cost is 20,000. Let's see what values do we get for actual cost 20,000. So actual cost equals to, so you, you can directly say 20,000 and 
cool this looks all right to me and then okay that's cool so you see that the value has become five because if you see 20,000 the only associated value within office is five so it returns five so now you can give one more number if you're interested and then I would give this 26,000 probably that that itself is five again let's take something which is not five so let's take 45,000 so 45,000 so now you see 45,000 and 20,000 have two values which is which are five and three so it's like as you understand the set analysis um, it's like making selections. So if you see here, I've hard coded them as part of my set analysis syntax, and uh, you're getting five and three, right? So you can. So concat function behaves as if like the count function or the sum function, whatever other aggregation functions are. So you, it, it, it works the same way with re in regards to the set expressions, right? So let's go back and remove this and I want to show you something interesting and then something very useful as well and hit OK. So now if you see here, although I've not made any selection, I'm still getting all the values, right? Because concat function works based on the selection state. So if in click view, right, in nothing, if nothing is selected, it kind of also means that everything is selected which is why you're seeing 54321 instead of you might be expecting if you're a newbie you might be expecting a null value there or not have any string values right that's a logical point it makes sense but don't forget that in click view if nothing is selected it's kind of your what's your full set if nothing is selected your full set is everything right i hope that makes sense so just to prove that if i go ahead and select some values here and then probably yeah select three values here you see this combination or this current current selection state has only two possible values which are four and five which is why your concat function is also restricting the string values to five and four or four and five okay i hope that makes sense so let me clear this out let's go back to PowerPoint and let me make this full screen okay let's jump through we have seen this so just to summarize all the points we have discussed you can use it in script and UI and when used in script and when you're getting more than one value you need to use or when you're using in script and when you're getting more than one field from a table you need to use the group by clause and it has four parameters three optional parameters and one compulsory parameter right and implicitly never forget that fun concat function implicitly returns the no distinct value right you can sort it by ascending or descending order i've shown you that and you can also use it as part of your set expression okay i hope this helps and give you some flavor of how and where you can use concat function it's pretty powerful if you use it as part of your script or ui to manipulate strings and then i use them a lot hopefully all of this will be helpful for you thank you for watching and don't forget to go on clickshare.com to answer click view question of the day i'll quickly show you that so if i go to my browser and just type clickshare.com and let it reload and if you see here we have a QQOTD all that means is click view question of the day so it's a quiz basically so every now and then uh, I would publish click view questions and then it's for you guys to go ahead and answer test your knowledge currently i've already published the question if you have seen this video and understood it you should answer this question right i'm pretty sure you should and i've already published like 208 questions there you can access all the archived questions in here you will get instant result you can also compare with other developers and see how you progress okay thank you for watching have a good day